Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Hello and very good afternoon to all of you. I am Nur Iza Aisha binti Abdul Ghani as your moderator today. Today, we will be talking about what's went wrong with our dakwah. Nowadays, dakwah is very popular among us. Dakwah is pleasing to people to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with great wisdom. It also the way to spread Islam to all people. Before we go further, let me introduce to all of you our panel. Our first panel is Dr. Siti Alia Maisarah binti Kamaruddin from University Technology Malaysia. Good afternoon, Dr. Good afternoon, Iza. Then our second panel today is Ms. Majdah binti Muhammad Kamil. Good afternoon, Ms. Majdah. Good afternoon, Ms. Iza. Then our third panel is Da'i Fatini binti Hanafi. Good afternoon, Da'i Fatini. Good afternoon. And our last panel is Professor Nurul Jannah binti Muhammad Nazli from International Islamic University, Malaysia. Good afternoon, Prof. Good afternoon, Ms. Iza. Hope all of you are fine. All right, without wasting our time, our first question, uh, my first question, sorry, my first question to our first panel, Dr. Alia, can you explain what is the purpose of dakwah? All right, thank you uh, to our moderator for the introduction. All right, I will answer the moderator's question. Firstly, the purpose of da'wah is to be the cause of Allah guidance, is general knowledge. Guidance is important things to human. If someone live without guidance, it's like blind men walk in the middle of night accompanied by the wild beast. As you all know, the Prophet is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the presenter to all human. Because of you by human preaching, we can see how our prophet won Islam's religion to grow and spread to all over the world. He migrates from one place to another to preach the disbelievers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to his Quran that human cannot give guidance to other human, but can influence to other human to, con to convert to Islam. And Islam too, there is no force, but our prophet always persuades them, uh, spread the verse of the Quran about the rule of law to make them realize there is no religion that Allah accept other than Islam religion. In Quran too, uh, Surah Al-Qashah, verse 56, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Inna Kala Tahdi Man Ahbabta, Walakinna Allah Yahdi Man Yasha, Wahu A'lamu Bil Mu'tadeen. Surakallahu Azim. It means, indeed, you, Muhammad, cannot guide whom you love, but Allah guides whom he will, and he knows best those who are guided. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even his uncle gave him more support to push in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not open his uncle heard to convert to Islam. Because of hidayah is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why guidance is very important to every human in life to make us know our direction either to heaven or hell. Thank you. That's all from me. Thanks for your long explanation, Dr. Alia. From what Dr. Alia said, now we know the purpose of da'wah is to be the cause of Allah guidance and it's very precious. As a slave, we must change guidance. All right. My next question is to Ms. Majda. So, what is the problem of da'wah uh, that's happened now? Can you explain to us about that? Okay, thanks to our moderator. Assalamualaikum and very good af very good afternoon uh, to all the audience who have been here today. Okay, firstly, the problem of da'wah that happened now is the preacher low knowledge is uh, in terms of sharia and others. The issue has an effect because as a preacher, 
must have uh, a high level of knowledge and know how to answer the question very well. A good preacher is a great in their knowledge and sincere in his work to educate the ummah with a lot of knowledge. After that, uh, preachers need, ha need to have the awareness and maturity to preach da'wah because learning things in technical will not leave an impact. When, uh, when a preacher has a high knowledge about religion, it will lead to a positive situation for Ummah. Uh, okay, lastly, beneficial knowledge is not to be an arrogant, but it is obedience uh, to the commands uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and responding to the command of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to convey knowledge even with just a, a piece of verse. Thank you. That's all from me. Thank you for your partnership, Ms. Majdah. That's very useful for all of us. So, there are many problems happens in da'wah. For example, the preacher low knowledge in the term of sharia and others. And it is because as a preacher, we must answer questions very well and have a good point. So, to make our forum interesting, Da'ni Fatili, as a preacher, you are more experienced on this topic, right? right? Can you share with us about characteristic of a preacher? Okay, thank you to our moderator. Assalamualaikum and very, a very good afternoon. I will share about uh, characteristic of a preacher. Firstly, a uh, characteristic of a preacher educate knowledge. A Muslim and a preacher should always acknowledge by continuing to see and seek knowledge, especially in the field of religion from a trusted religion education system, such as the system of Talari and Sanat. Secondly, controlling us. Once the preacher is able to foreclose the ties with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and circus attention to him, the preacher needs to repair himself and control his passion. The preacher should now all the common and prohibition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al-Ghazali said, in the business of preaching to the pupil, the preacher must first correct himself. Thirdly, stay away from ujub in preaching. Ujub is the nature of having fun with oneself, feeling good toward oneself, and attributing that goodness to ourselves. Uju is among the most reprehensible trait because a person who attribute goodness to himself seem to deny the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him. Because in fact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which made him a good human being and allow him to preach in the way him, him to preach in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beside the properest faith among the great 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 Characteristic of a Robani preacher is that he has perfect faith and belief. This is because this is because faith confident in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. A true understand of the reality of something and the strength of the Islamic faith are the most important thing in talking mind along the path of dakwah. Last but not least, it is to love dakwah and the spirit of sacrifice to perform dakwah. These qualities are among the qualities that must be posed by a preacher. It shows the preacher's undivided love for his work. To convey his message effectively, the preacher must have a noble nature and not be easily influenced by others. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fatili, for your explanation. Now we know some characteristics of a preacher. For example, as a preacher, they should be educated knowledge, controlling lust, and they must have spirit or scarified to perform da'wah. And this is very important because they must love their work. Okay, my last question in this session uh, to Professor Jannah. Are you okay, Prof? 
Okay. Okay. We have know about problem in dakwah and also characteristic of a preacher. So now how a preach in the right way? Okay, thank you to our moderator, Ms. Iza, for posing open-minded question to us all of us in preparation for our debate on the issue of da'wah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon everyone. Okay, right. Uh, we are all familiar with the term da'wah. So, in order to continue our discussion today, I will explain how to preach correctly in Islamic law. Apart from the word da'wah, another word that sounds familiar in, is uh, al-mawiza al hasana which means useful guidance, reminder, or teaching in terms of, termilo uh, in terms of, of terminology. Al-Mawiza Al-Hasana refers to presenting a compelling example as well as reminding the target of da'wah with the Quran and effectively refuting their arguments. According to Sayyid Qutu Al-Mawiza, the first way is to gently touch the heart, drawing in feelings, understanding not to rebuke or criticize in things that are not compulsory, and not to reveal a person wrongdoing in public due to ignorance or intention. It's good, but it's done incorrectly. For example, we observe today on social media netizen continuing to rashly rebuke a person. Uh, uh, to reboot a person uh, mistakes without a motion to check, in addition to buying on other social media, reprimanding openly and even using hard, word, uh, hard words that make the person's heart harder to uh, accept the admonish. Does it make us fall in love in the same way? Not in the least. Remember that a simple reminder can soften uh, a stony human heart calm a white heart and produce better outcomes that insulting that bless, blasphemous language. Firman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in Surah Taha verse 44 A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Fakula lahu qawlan layyinan la'an lahu yatadakkaru aw yaksha Speak to him with gentle words Perhaps he will ponder of fear. Furthermore Preach with love. It is a demand that we love one another while imparting the message, and those who listen will be affected. Uh, in my own life, for example, I have a friend who used to be someone who was very uh, consci conscious of his aura. Uh, she used to wear hijab, but now she only wears it once in a while. Uh, this means that she wears hijab on and off. As a friend, what should I do? Should I stop being her friend? Uh, no, the answer is no. Okay, we should not uh, abandon someone just because they make a mistake. We never know what the person is going through. We just know what we see. As a friend, I should adv uh, advise her instead. Every woman is born with the ability to be poor. Uh, everyone is born <coughs> with the ability to be a decent person as if a newborn baby were sinless, even though uh, nature is tainted with negative behavior. Human beings are endowed with the ability to shift their nature from bad to good through the power of the commit a major sin. He was able to change his way uh, with Allah's permission after receiving a, love, uh, a loving touch of the Allah from us. It is evident how essential the preaching method is in this case. We must ensure that everyone has the ability to be to be good. Islam has pro provided us with, list, uh, with lessons that are wise and secure. Not only safe in this world, uh, but safe in the hereafter, uh, akhirah. If you remind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Imran, verse 159, okay, the meaning is, uh, it is up of Allah's mercy that you, O Prophet, have been lenient with them. Had you been cruel or hard-hearted, uh, they would have certainly abandoned you. 
so pardon them as Allah uh, Allah's forgiveness for them and consult with them in conducting matters once you make a decision put your trust in Allah surely Allah loves the, uh, those who trust in him okay the fourth way uh, is to preach with morals one of the effective ways of preaching is to show high moral values sometimes we do not need to talk but simply showing uh, good morals is enough to make people stun or fascinate the right stuff. The prophet said, "The person I love, I uh, the person I love the most and the one closest to me, is the person with the best morals. And the person I hate the most and farthest away from me is the person with the worst morals. That is those who talk a lot." and like to mock people with their words. Hadis Riwayat Ahmad Like ourselves, as people who want to preach, we need to see and emulate one of the good morals of person. For example, the morals of uh, the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a human being, a noble character, and he has the best human morals. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Indeed, I was sent to perfect morals. Hadith narrated by Bayhaki. An example of the one <coughs> of one of the morals of Prophet apologizing to each other. We can relate the morality to the way we preach. Even though we as preachers do not run away from mistakes, right? Then here, we when we make a mistake against the person we want to convey the, the message to we continue to apologize whether it is a mistake in terms of speech uh, or action sometimes we are not aware of our own mistakes while preaching especially in our speech here arises uh, arises another morality of rasulullah which is humility through apologizing okay this is all from me inshallah i will continue in second session with a new questions i hope this can um, benefit all of you. Thank you. Wow, that is long explanation. Thank you, Prof. Jana, for your explanation. So, from what uh, Prof. Jana said, in a conclusion that I can conclude this, as a preacher, we need to speak or that one which gentle work because everybody loves this way, right? And also, we can da'wah with our moral. Sometimes we do not talk, but simply showing good moral is enough to make people stand and fast connected by Islam. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's all in our first session. So, let me make a little conclusion. In this session, uh, we know the purpose of da'wah is to be the cause of Allah's guidance. If someone live without guidance, it's like blind men fought in the middle of the night. Next, we know in da'wah also have some problem that like the preacher low knowledge in terms of sharia and others and is it because as a preacher we must answer question very well and have a good point to explain that uh, to explain to your audience um, besides that to be a great preacher we must have educate knowledge stay away from uju in preaching and have spirit of scarified to perform da'wah. Then we also know the right way to give to give a preach. For example, da'wah with our moral. Sometimes we don't need to talk, but simply showing good moral is enough to make people stand and face connected by Islam. So, ladies and gentlemen, without wasting our time, let's start our session two. As we all know, social media is a part of our life. So that one will grow fast when we use this method to spread, uh, to spread out about Islam. So, Dr. Alia, are you ready for my question? Inshallah, yes. So, my question is, is it preaching on social media is the best way or not? Okay. Uh, in my opinion, yes. For, my, for your information, media social nowadays has been the first place 
to get the information. Example like Google, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and so on. Social media too attracts more human attention, especially teenagers, to get information less than 10 seconds. With that, preachers nowadays can change their way to preach to social media to attract more teenagers, especially to take a benefit on that war when preacher preach them in social media. That is why when times change, the way of preaching shall be also different so that they do not get bored. The words of prophecy deliver from me even just one sentence. Reported by Ahmad Bukhari and Tarmizi. In this hadith, our prophet wants to tell all of Muslims to preach to everyone, even if we are busy. I have uh, uh, little tips uh, to everyone to preach, uh, even you are so busy with many words. As you can see, uh, human nowadays, uh, even a woman like us, uh, need to find a job because of our economy, uh, not like before. Um, okay, as example, I give you an example. You can follow or get information from preacher on social media or website like Mufti Wilayah Persekutuan and just copy the information and spread on social media. Very fast and simple. And at the same time, you have a carry out your responsibility as a Muslim. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you for your partnership, Dr. Alia. This is very useful for all of us. Now we know the media social have their own benefits on dakwah. As example, uh, you can get some information from preacher on social media or website, like uh, as example like website Mufti Wilayah Rights, and just copy the information and spread that on our own social media like website. Then you also done with your responsibilities as Muslim. My next question to Miss Majda. What are the advantages of dawah in social media? Okay, uh, thank you, Miss Iza. Uh, a lot of advantage preaching on social media, uh, such as uh, social media can attract the attention of the younger generation because mm, nowadays social media provides a variety of information to all generation and younger generation has uh, access to the internet such as uh, using computer, uh, smartphone or other gadget. Because uh, because of that, the uh, preaching on social media will affect all. Okay, uh, after, after that, uh, preaching on social media becomes a priority because it is can able more gadget through the exposure of preaching for the purpose of calling for goodness. Uh, for example, uh, a preacher uh, talks about the law, uh, law of prayer in Facebook app and from there, teenagers will get knowledge about it and also share to their friends. Uh, this is will not only have a good effect on the younger generation, but uh, will also have uh, an effect to all communities and can also invite everyone to, to do good things in their life. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Masjah. There are many advantages of dakwah in social media. And first, social media can extract the attention of the younger generation about dakwah. Then preaching on social media also become a, become a priority because it is, can be able more target through the exposure of preaching for the purpose of the dakwah. So, uh, that in fact, are you still okay right now? Okay. Okay. Um, my question is, what is the disadvantages of dakwah social media? Thank you to our moderator for the question. The disadvantage of da'wah in social media. The disadvantage of da'wah to social media is that communication is intertwined in one direction and the response from the listener cannot be, talk, 
we talk about directly. In moving toward the main goal of da'wah, the content of the message on the internet are seen to be passed openly and freely to others without censorship and can be performed by anyone by downloading the news independently. This situation will, of course, challenge the Islamic concept and integrity of information in Islam beside with the easy access of the internet. Explanation regarding our religion can be found easily which may lead to the problem of the influx of information. The excessiveness of information can create an atmosphere of chaos where users will become skeptical while searching for reliable information. They will not know which information they should trust anymore. Things are getting serious when nowadays some individuals are pretending to be an Ustad and Ustazah, assuming to know everything about what they say without actually provide a proper hadith or reverence. The validity of the message is unclear. It is hard for people with strong Islam education to believe in what they say. They, they, uh, they alone accept it. But for people who do not have much understanding on Islam, the mitres will trust the message that they have received. Thank you. That's all. Thank you to Da'in Fatili for her wonderful explanation. The, the advantages of da'wah through social media is the communication is intertwined in one direction. And the response from the listener cannot be talked about, about it directly. So, um, my last question, my last question to Prof. Jana. So, what's the impact of da'wah on social media? Thank you, Ms. Iza, for your question. Uh, due to technological advance, more social platforms are being met and they are a medium for delivery, knowledge and information. Through the use of various applications such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and so on, that work can be conveyed and become a, an important aspect of achieving goodness and success in life. Related to that, the social media push is able to produce good results in preaching to the general public. We must be society that helps others to get a new thing. Uh, Freeman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah verse 2, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanu wajim wa ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala al-ithmi wa al-unwan Wattakullah inna Allah shadeed al-aqab Sadaqallahu al-azim Cooperate with one another in goodness and rightness and do not cooperate in sin and transgression and be mindful uh, be mindful of Allah Surely Allah uh, is ever uh, in punishment In that, because of the diversity and extensive availability of social media it is the preferred method of communication for our generation and it can thus be employed as a major medium in the delivery of da'wah. Preaching on social media is a powerful application that can have a positive impact. The da'wah strategy distributed uh, through social media not only had a positive impact but it was also quick, influential and widespread. More interestingly, Social media da'wah uh, not only has consequence for individuals to return to observing Allah's comments, but it also have uh, it, uh, but it also has ramifications and benefits for community to uh, to live in unity, peace, and harmony without conflict. The implication of Islamic da'wah that are met can also curb disobedience and wickedness. Uh, the spread of da'wah through uh, social media is a priority today because it, because it is able to target more targets. For example, uh, a preacher, Haisha Hijana, she is a student from UKM Bangi. She started uh, her preaching on social media at, uh, at the age of 18. 
on her Instagram in 2016. She has been an influencer and uh, as a preacher for six years. She starts sharing knowledge by just making videos that can be watched by all people. Many universities and schools uh, have invited her to give talks and share her knowledge with the students. She chose social uh, media as a platform to convey the message by talking about manners, about aura, about household matters, and other through TikTok application too. Uh, many young people were happy with the way he preached and his gentle and wise rebuke. We already know that uh, Instagram and TikTok uh, are, two the, are two of the most popular apps within the community for sharing stories and con connecting with uh, individuals. <clears throat> this will not only have an impact on Muslim community, but it, it, it will uh, also draw the attention of people of other race who want to learn about uh, Islam's beauty. We must remember that while Islamic knowledge cannot be implemented uh, in society, it is not impossible. With a slew of hard issue uh, lo uh, looming uh, in Malaysia, the impact of yellow or negative culture could jeopardize Muslim religion and tough. Uh, an example that we can see nowadays is that if there is one TikToker whose aura is not perfect on social media, we will see that there are many comments mocking and looking at him. Is that the real way of preaching? We will be blazing to be a better person than before? The answer is definitely no. Because the inappropriate uh, comments uh, made him feel that Muslims do not have good manners. And at the same time, other race will look askance at Islam. We don't want this to happen, so use social media as a proper and wise ta'wah platform uh, for everyone, regardless of race and ethnicity. We should uh, all be equally uh, responsible for using the available technology to deliver for mes uh, the message. Use the social media approach in a good way. We must understand that the real concept of da'wah is education, and it is not about religious knowledge alone but include uh, all knowledge as long as it returns to the original purpose, which is to hold on to the truth and turn away from uh, evil. The community needs that advice and one of the ways uh, is to preach. If we look at the current scenario and development of the uh, of technology, uh, social media is among the appropriate and appropriate avenues used to convey that call of goodness. Uh, as a good preachers uh, and communicators, it is our true uh, responsibility to carry on the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, that is uh, that's from uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for your long uh, clarification, Professor Jannah. So now we know there are many impact of the word on social media, right? So preaching on social media is a very powerful application that can have a positive impact and also negative impact. Okay, actually there are a lot of question and answer that I want to share with audience. But since the time is running, I will conclude our forum that dakwah is important now to spread Islam. Dakwah among us is one of the big topics that need to be taken action to that to spread Islam. So you so it will be a coin on dawah it is it is because it is happening everywhere, even in social media. You may know it and you may see it because it's popular in this century. As a Muslim we should take action to participate in dawah activities as long as long as uh, to spread Islam. So uh, I think that's all from us today. Thank you to all our panelists. Welcome. So, Welcome. Thank you for. Bye. Thank you Bye -bye. for leaning your ears in our forum. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.